Namaste, everyone. So I'm still reading to you from Namarupa Magazine, the magazine of classical Indian thought, which I wrote an article in the recent issue on um, goddess worship and Shakti. And now we're at the section where I'm going to read to you from the pilgrimage, which is the trip I did two years ago to West Bengal to visit Shakti Peaks. So here it goes. I arrive in Kolkata and check in to the Ramakrishna Ashram. It's a delightful little oasis in the otherwise hectic cultural capital of India that is also known as the City of Joy. I met my friend and guide, Kostab Das Delvli, and a Yengar yoga practitioner and a student researching his PhD on Tantra at Calcutta University. His specialty is the wandering Baal musicians and the Sahaja yoga practices. I'm blessed that he's agreed to accompany me on my journey through the Tantra heartland and we pour over maps and discuss the itinerary. On top of my list of places to visit are the Shakti Peaks in West Bengal. There are 51 scattered throughout India, and we have time to visit three of the 13 Shakti Peaks in West Bengal. The Kaligat Kali Mandir in Kolkata, Kankali and Bakrishwar in the Durban district of West Bengal. I'm disappointed we're not going to Terapeuth, which is, you know, infamous for its sacred cremation grounds, home to ash-smeared Agora yogis who meditate on corpses, drink alcohol from human skulls, and perform other tantric transgressional practices on the left-handed path. And the tantric sadhanas living in huts among the banyan trees that are embellished with red-painted skulls embedded into the mud walls. It's unclear whether Terapeuth is an official peak, as it is included on some lists, but not others. Um, Tara is also a form of goddess Kali, Adi Shakti, the divine um, consort of Shiva. I've spent time in the cremation grounds of Pashupati and want to visit the bhaktas of goddess Tara Ma, who feel an intimate connection with her. I want to see this powerful Siddha peak, a place where yogis can achieve enlightenment or gain supernatural powers, a place that is inextricably bound up with the idea of the cremation ground as a liminal zone. The Mahashmasham is a tirtha, a place where one crosses over from the physical to the spiritual realm, or perhaps these two worlds merge within this ultimate place of transformation Rituals and sadhanas are believed to yield faster and more powerful results. Terapeuth is the perfect place to encounter a wild yogini, but Kostab Das says it's too commercial and Disneyfied. It's filthy and disgusting, but isn't that exactly what the charnel ground is supposed to be like? Impure the place that challenges us to see with pure perception and not allow the mind to become disturbed. Equanimity. Anyway, he promises to take me to more authentic places with fewer tourists in remote parts of Bengal. So in the late afternoon, we visit Kaligat, Kali Mandir, our first Shakti peak. The main form of the goddess in Bengal is Kali. Kali is one of the fiercest forms of Devi with her wild hair, blood dripping fans, necklace of human severed skulls, and the extended tongue sucking up the blood from the battlefield in an act of compassion. Spiritual transformation is the purpose of pilgrimage and holy places that one visits tend to be situated at Tirthas that facilitate this transcendence. Um, our boat trip across Kolkata's Hooghly River becomes a symbolic act of spiritual crossing. From the mundane to the sacred abode of the Cosmic Mother, Kaligat, Kali Mandir. 
Kaligat is the dwelling place of a fiercely, of a particularly fierce incarnation of the goddess known as Dakshina, self-facing Kalika. I approach, as I approach her riverside dwelling, I imagine the old Kaligat of old illustrations, the dome temple rising out of the dense jungle, a remote destination accessed by boat before it was transformed into a bustling temple complex of one of India's busiest cities. Kaligat is a desirable pilgrimage site, perfectly situated to facilitate a shift in perspective from the dual to the non-dual tantric world at the feet of the goddess. Shiva and Shakti merge here and worship of the goddess is shared with that of Shiva at a nearby Lingam temple. Kaligat is close to the cremation grounds on the banks of the Adi Ganga, where people make the final crossing from the realm of the physical to the spiritual. Kaligat is a Shakti peak where the toes of Sati's right foot are said to have fallen, making it the ultimate place of goddess worship where devotees have come for centuries to surrender themselves at the feet of the Divine Mother. Kaligat Temple is 200 years old, but it feels more ancient. Its origins are obscured in myth, but stories about an important Kali temple in this area date to the 12th century CE. One tells of a devotee who sees a luminous ray of light coming from the riverbed and upon investigation finds a toe, a stone carved in the form of a human toe. He begins to worship Kali in the midst of the thick jungle. Local folklore says that in ancient times, the headhunting tribal Kapilakas, the skull bearers, who lived there worshiped a dark goddess with human sacrifice. If the origins of Kali worship involved a marginal goddess existing outside of society, in 2019, Kali is very much mainstream. In the 16th century, King Manasinga built the small but hut temple, um, the small hut temple to Goddess Kali that is considered to be the original temple of Kali Ma. This shrine grew to its present form thanks to the Sabarna Roy Chowdhury family of Bengal who built the Kali Ghat temple in 1809 CE. The Kali Kali Mandir is classic Bengali architecture with stacked hut-like domes that evoke the mud and thatched roof huts of the villages. The top dome is crowned with three spires and there is a diamond pattern of green and white tiles cladding the outer walls that remind me of those in a British Victorian pub. <coughs> This is, you know, the British were there huh? when it was built. Kaligat is a bustling place in one of Kolkata's oldest neighborhoods. Sadhus sit cross-legged in the adjacent dance hall, counting mantras with their mala, uh, while the usual queue of devotees snakes around the temple complex. I'm escorted past the sacrificial altar whose sticky blood from the Brahmanical sacrifices is a residue of Kali's tribal roots. I imagine Kali herself would prefer a different kind of blood, blood from the woundless wound, menstrual blood. But her connection with ancient rituals of purity and bloodletting endures, and even despite her own distaste for slaughter, and in the midst of one of India's most cosmopolitan cities. The line of devotees moves quickly through the Garba Griya, the womb chamber, the sanctum, the inner sanctorium, and soon I'm face to face with Kali Ma. She doesn't look much like other images of Kali in Bengal. This anthropomorphic deity is sculpted from a monolith, polished black stone. 
three huge eyes accentuated with brightly colored orange cindor or pigment powder peer out from the garlands of red hibiscus flowers. Her tongue, long, is made of gold. She holds a curved knife and the severed head of an evil Asura demon. The scimitar signifies divine knowledge and the head represents the destruction of the human ego, which must be, spl spl which must be slain by divine knowledge in order to attain moksha or liberation. Her other two hands are in the abhaya and vajra mudras conveying fearlessness and offering her boons. She wears a necklace with 108 cast metal heads of human men. Darshan with Kali is a sublime experience that leaves me awestruck. Momentarily lost in her beauty that touches my heart. I really feel seen by this transcendental deity. I kneel down to touch her feet and surrender my ego and merge with the goddess. A priest breaks my momentary knowing and marks my forehead with orange cinder from Kali's own body. I am blessed. Jaima. Another Kali lives here, a magical Swayambu or self-arisen one. Considered too powerful for the gaze of us mortals, she is never displayed to the public, nor is she ever seen by the priests. This is the Adiwoop, the original form of Kali. One of the toes from Shakti's, um, from Sati's right foot that fell in the Shakti peak. So this is, you know, what the Adi root is. Concealed within a box inside the reclining silver Shiva upon which the Kalika Murti stands. Once a year, a secretly, um, a highly secretive ritual takes place behind the sealed doors of the inner sanctum where blindfolded priests um, remove Sati's toe and in a full moon ceremony, which it is bathed in Ganga water and scented oils before being freshly dressed and put back into its dwelling place once more. Kaligat is a place of magic and legend, one haunted by the goddess that devours all forms of dualism masculine and feminine, life and death, spiritual and mundane, the cosmic mother, an embodiment of all that is nurturing and kind, wisdom and compassion, Jai Ma. So here we have the deity in the Kaligat Mandir. Jai Ma, Kali Ma, with her tongue. And I'll just see if there is uh, another illustration. No, actually, I was hoping there uh, is one of these old illustrations, but there really isn't. However, there is a goddess Dumavati um, at this temple, um, an illustration of her, who's one of the Mahavidyas, and again represents a fearful aspect of the Divine Mother. And she's often portrayed as an old, ugly widow and is associated uh, with things considered inauspicious and unattractive. So her ugly form teaches us to look beyond the superficial, to look inward and to seek the inner truths of life. And so I wonder if you can see this. Up at the top there is uh, Dumba Van Dumba Mati Duma Vati. Okay. Just before sunset, we arrive at 
Dakshineswar uh, Kali Temple, the place where Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, the Bengali tantric mystic and guru of Swami Vivekananda, had his profound spiritual um, experience with Kali. Ramakrishna, who lived from 1836 to 1886, was a bhakti yogi and he had such strong devotion that he actually grew breasts during one of his uh, sadhanas. Like most tantrikas, he wanted to see Kali and have her appear to him and become the deity. So on one occasion, he danced all weekend with wild abandon and took Kali's curved knife, threatening to kill himself unless she appeared. So he literally said, you know, Kali Ma, if you love your son, I'm, you know, stop me from decapitating myself and cutting off my head. And she actually did. Apparently she manifested and grabbed the, um, her scimitar. Um, so um, when he tried to cut off his own head, Matakali appeared to him, grabbed the knife from his hand and stopped him cold. I want Darshan with this Kali that delivered him to enlightenment and whom he took such good care of to the end of his days. So Dak Shineswar Kali Temple is a large temple complex built between 1847 and 1855, and it sprawls over 20 acres on the eastern banks of the Hooghly River. That's an old photo of it. And um, it's um, situated on an old Muslim burial ground. Doesn't that sound like a familiar story? Um, a burial ground shaped like a tortoise, considered auspicious for the worship of Shakti, according to the Tantric tradition. So the main temple is built in the traditional um, Navaratna nine spires, which again, you can see the nine spire style of West Bengal. Here is another image. and it rises almost 100 feet, 30 meters high. It's cladded in what looks like British Victorian glazed ceramic tiles. <laughs> um, it took eight years and 900,000 rupees to complete, which is probably like nine million pounds today, um, to complete the construction and it was paid for by Rani Rashmoni a philanthropist and devotee of Kali until the idol of goddess Kali was finally installed on May 31st, 1855. Kastab, my guide and friend, um, has had darshan of Kali many times and knows how to avoid waiting in the queue for over two hours with her regular devotees. So we go into a tiny shop where we pay a nominal fee to hire a priest, get puja supplies, and I leave my chapels, my sandals. Um, I sweep through the temple directly to the Garba Griha, the inner sanctum, and um, that houses a manifestation of goddess Kali known as uh, Bhavatarini, which means she who liberates her devotions from samsara, the ocean of suffering, the ocean of existence. She liberates us from suffering and from the wheel of karma. Despite being escorted by a priest, it's still difficult to see her. There's such excitement and devotion here that I feel crushed by the crowd. I'm a female yogini, yet throngs of men are pushing so hard it's impossible to have darshan. I tell the priest I'm not leaving until I see her. Um, he spreads his arms and pushes the men back like he's parting the sea and I fix my drishti gaze on her eyes. There she is, Ma Kali Bhavaratini, 
um, standing on the chest of a supine shiva, garlanded in sweet-smelling flowers and placed on a thousand pebble lotus made of silver encrusted with glittering, precious, and priceless jewels. I see her wide slanted eyes and long tongue. Darshan is an act of both seeing the deity and being seen by the deity, a sudden transformation that leads from the outer guru to the guru within, um, where you can see your own true nature and become one with the deity. Jai Ma. And um, here is the um, the goddess Bhavatarini at the Kali Temple in Dakshinaswa. Okay, so next on the pilgrimage, I take a train to Shanti Nikitan. And so I will read um, you about that in the next video. Please join.